In this video, I'll show you how to install a Kali Linux from scratch on VirtualBox. In the end, I will also show you the tips and tricks to enable two-way clipboard, shared folders, time synchronization and many more by using the guest additions of VirtualBox. So stay tuned until the end of this video to get all the steps right. Hello everyone, welcome to IoT Frontier. My name is Hari Harna. Let's get started. First, I'll try to give you a glimpse on how the virtualization work. So if you see the diagram here, the outer box is host, that is our physical machine. It could be your PC or laptop. On top of that, you have your host OS, which is Windows in this case. And then on top of it, we have virtual box. This virtual box will be having different virtual machines that we can create. So one of them that we are going to talk about is Kali Linux. So this is how it would be looking. So if you talk about the prerequisite, we need to first enable virtualization and check if it is already enabled or not. So you can right click on the windows or press windows X. Then from here, you can go to the task manager. So inside the task manager, go to performance, click on CPU. Under the CPU, you should see this virtualization is enabled. If this is not enabled, then you need to enable it on the BIOS settings. To enable it on the BIOS settings, you need to first restart the PC and then depending on the model of the PC, for example, HP uses Escape or F10 and Lenovo or others might use F2. So you need to find that based on your make and model of your laptop, then press on that and then the BIOS boot will open. So in the boot menu, we have to search for CPU or securities menu. And from there, if you are using Intel CPU, then you will be having Intel virtualization technology and then you need to enable it. So this is one example of that. So here you can see under advanced, you can see this Intel virtualization technology and it was disabled. So we can enable this. And the same way, if you are using AMD chip, then you will be having similar way where in advanced you will be having SVM mode. You need to enable that. So once this is done, you have to restart the system. And then first thing that we need to do is go to the virtual box website from the Google and click on download. So under download, you can click on Windows host. So if you click on it, it will download. So I have already downloaded once. I will click on it and install. So I'll have to just Click on next, next for everything. So in the meanwhile, I'll also open Kali Linux. So in the Google, you can click on Kali Linux and then there will be download Kali. So here there are two options. The first one is installer images and second one is virtual machines. But don't get confused with the name virtual machines because this is a pre-built image and this will be working as a snapshot. So we don't want to use that. We want to use an installer from scratch. So you can click on this. And from here, if you are using Apple Silicon, which is MacBook or something, then it will be, you have to select this, otherwise this one. And from here, you can click on this installer and this is 4.2 GB. So if, if you click on it, it will be downloading. So I have already downloaded. So I'll just cancel now. In the meanwhile, we have this Oracle virtual box already installed. Click on finish. So this is how it is looking right now. So this virtual box user interface keeps on changing because this is the latest version you will be seeing like this. At the making of this video, we have the Kali Linux, which is 2025.3 version. Once that is downloaded, uh, next thing is we need to open this virtual box. So you can click on this machine and click on new. So here the new virtual machine interface of this wizard will be open. So you need to give the name as Kali and ISO image that you have downloaded. You can select from there, click on others from where you have downloaded, select that, click on open and the OS is Linux. And OS distribution would be, you can select Debian and Debian 64. So we don't have to select this unattended installation. So you can skip the second one and go to the virtual hardware. And here you need to give your RAM. So for every system, there will be different green here. So for me, I can give until this point. 
so i'll use just 8 gb merely of ram and don't exceed the green and number of cpus i'll give nearly 6 and uh, the virtual hard drive so virtual hard drive we need to give at least 20 so i'll give 40 and click on finish so go to home and machines so under machines you have this kali so now you need to click on this settings so under this settings you need to select this expert mode so under the features you need to enable the shade clipboard as bidirectional and drag and drop as bidirectional and remaining you can leave it as it is under the display give the maximum video memory then under the graphics controller you need to use vms vga and under the storage you can see already this iso file is there so you don't have to worry about that network so if you select the bridged adapter the kali linux will be given ip address and that can be used for remote access so this shared folders and user interfaces can be done later on as well so click on ok so now we are done and uh, we can click on start so i'll click on graphical install press enter and the language also you need to select english then continue the country this is also keyboard mapping so i'll leave it as it is and then it will ask for the host name so here you can leave the host name as kali itself continue and the domain name as blank full name of the user so you can give your name so from the name it will choose the lower case letters and then continue give the password So here you can see uh, the partitioning of disk so you can use the first option guided and then select the same hard disk and you can click on continue and finish here you need to select yes so now you can see the software selection has come so you can go with the default one so it will give you xfc that kali default environment and then continue now you need to install this grub bootloader so click on yes and continue so select the device manually and continue now the installation is done you need to click on continue so it will reboot the system click on enter or it will boot in one second now enter the username and password click on login now let's see if the full screen mode works yes now the full screen is working after logging in so this is the desktop of the kali linux and you can see all the applications needed for penetration testing and many more Next, we'll try to install the guest additions so that we'll get shared folders, clipboard and many more. So to get out of this uh, full screen, you need to click on down and view full screen mode. So this is there and I'll show you the basic importance of guest additions. So it will provide us shared folders, better video support, seamless windows and time synchronization, shared clipboard, drag and drop, everything that we have. So all these are available here. So for this to work, we have to install Q softwares. So I'll change the font size first, go to preferences and change the font size. First update the app. So it may take 10 to 15 minutes i'll fast forward this now we can see the app packages got updated and upgraded so now we'll restart this now we'll open the terminal again so here we need to install linux header kernels as well as build essentials so I'll type this command.
So now what we can do is we can go to the devices, click on insert guest addition CD image, go to the file manager and you can see this VBox, open this, select all and copy them, paste in the documents. Now using the terminal that we have, go to documents and we need to change the permission of one file. So you need to type this command and now we need to execute that. So it is asking to run with sudo. So click on yes. So we are getting some error. So I will try to again use a different command to install Linux headers. Now if I run this vbox linux additions, I am able to see it has removed the old installed version and trying to install the latest one. Now we can restart the VM. So now we have restarted the system, we will try the shared clipboard. So from the host file, I can type test from host and copy here and in the Kali Linux, I will open this mouse pad and paste. So I can paste it here. Then I will test from guest. So here I am copying it. So in the notepad, I will paste it. So now we can see shared clipboard is working. Another important thing is in case you want to delete this Kali Linux from the virtual box, first you need to close this and power off. And then you can click on right click here and remove and click on delete the virtual machine files and virtual hard disk and click on remove. That's it. And this is how you can install Kali Linux on your virtual box. If you found this video informative, please type helpful and smash that like button. If you are interested to learn how to install Ubuntu on VirtualBox, you can click on the end screen. Your support means a lot to us and helps us keep creating more content like you. So please subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in another interesting video.